and Disney parks are asking our guests, what will you celebrate? Today, we're gathered here to celebrate the culmination of 1,000 journeys, 1,000 entries into American citizenship. Well, I have a question for you. Are you ready? Yes. Raise your right hand. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince. Okay. Congratulations. I'm honored to welcome you as America's newest citizen. The American dream. There's a reason they call it a dream. <laughs> Who's there? Cock a doodle doo, pal. No, 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 no! I don't have any more money! My job sucks right now! Please! I'll have more money next month! You can't take my house! Is that your signature? Okay, well, just tell me work something out, okay? I mean, you said I'm a good credit guy, right? I mean, hey, wait! My dog is in there! No! Don't take my dream! We've had this philosophy <laughs> for eight years. They call it the ownership society, but what it really means is that you're on your own. <laughs> and we know the results. You feel it in your own lives. Jobs have disappeared. People's life savings have been put at risk. Millions of families face foreclosure and millions more have seen their home values plummet. The cost of everything from gas to groceries to health care has gone up. While the dream of a college education for our kids and a secure and dignified retirement for our seniors feels like it's slowly slipping away. These are the struggles that Americans are facing. This is the pain that has now trickled up. So let's be clear. What we've seen the last few days is nothing less than the final verdict on an economic philosophy that has completely failed. And I am running for President of the United States because the dream of the American people must not be endangered anymore. The dream has to be good education for your children, a peaceful environment, to earn a decent wage. Uh, to eliminate the homeless, the people who are in poverty and the underclass. That should be the American dream. And it cannot be accomplished unless those who are directing American foreign policy and American uh, policies that affect the world do not go after the things that represent money. Shortly after World War II, these guys were figuring out how to ramp up the economy. Retailing analyst Victor LeBeau articulated the solution that's become the norm for the whole system. He said, our enormously productive economy demands that we make consumption our way of life, that we convert the buying and use of goods into rituals, that we seek our spiritual satisfaction, our ego satisfaction in consumption. We need things consumed, burned up, replaced, and discarded at an ever-accelerating rate. President Eisenhower's Council of Economic Advisors chairman said that the American economy's ultimate purpose is to produce more consumer goods. More consumer goods? Our ultimate purpose? Not provide health care or education or safe transportation or sustainability or justice? Consumer goods? The people of the United States suffer a great deal. Don't be misled by the things that you see. Here, According to this paper, the Financial Times, that I got in the aeroplane coming to Tehran, it says that 40 million or even more of the people of the United States are under the poverty line. That's more than 15% of the population. The rest of the people, the middle class, is dwindling decreasing in number. The only people who are living well in the United States are 1% of the population. They own more than 50% of the wealth of the whole country. 
the rest of the 99% are suffering and they really need Maidan at Tahrir. A wall of police officers stand guard on Wall Street as thousands of protesters flock to the heart of the financial district to have their voices heard. I'm pretty frustrated. Uh, I thought we voted for change in 2008. Obviously, we didn't get that. A number of these protesters say they're fed up with high unemployment and the nation's current economic situation. Uh, also, we're here in uh, solidarity with everyone around the, the globe right now, from Egypt to Greece to everywhere else where they're out in the streets, and they're not going to take it anymore. They're not going to have their, their lives bartered away by people in, uh, in offices that have nothing to do with their lives. Protest organizers say people from a large spectrum of political affiliations are represented at this weekend's event, an event some say will last through the week to come. I've talked to a lot of people who vote strictly Republican that are here. I've talked to Tea Party members. I've talked to people who vote Democrat. And then just, you know, black bloc anarchists. There's everybody in between. What you're looking at in Tunisia, in Egypt, in Yemen, in Jordan, in Libya, in Bahrain, and soon, very soon, in all the nations of the world, and even sooner to take place in America. So don't you get bent out of shape with what you see happening there. While it's happening there, you better prepare because it will be coming to your door, America. And I hope that President Obama will remember his instructions to other nations. Be careful how you attack and kill innocent people who are protesting. Take your own words into your bosom and be reminded when it comes to your door. affect their brains by the lies they hear every day in every newspaper, on every TV channel and it affected their pockets by wars that there is no benefit. El gobierno sionista está a nivel mundial, está detrás de muchos gobiernos. ¿Quiénes manejan realmente en los Estados Unidos? son los sionistas y en muchos otros países más. But the western control media mainly in America controlled by the Jewish community with a lot of hardcore Zionists at the center they shape how we view the world. This tube is the gospel, the ultimate revelation. This tube can make or break presidents, popes, prime ministers. This tube is the most awesome goddamn force in the whole godless world and woe is us if it ever falls into the hands of the wrong people and when the 12th largest company in the world controls the most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world who knows what shit will be peddled for truth on this network so you listen to me listen to me television is not the truth Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television 
is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. So if you want the truth, go to God. Go to your gurus. Go to yourself. Because that's the only place you're ever going to find any real truth. Unfortunately, that's not the situation among American politicians. American politicians, as you know, are slaves to Israel. Israel gets probably more than $10 billion a year from the United States. Not only the $3 billion that we are talking about, but there are other ways that they are getting the aid. And part of this aid comes back through APAC, the Israeli lobby in the United States, and they pay it to the politicians. And the politicians are very scared of opposing Israel. If they did, that means the end of their term in the Congress. They cannot do that. America and Israel have a special friendship. You have devoted yourselves to strengthening the bonds between the United States and Israel. The United States will stand with Israel now and forever. <laughs> the bonds between the United States and Israel are unbreakable. And the commitment of the United States to the security of Israel is ironclad. Um, does an excellent job of constantly testing the loyalty of people in Congress to their cause. And so there's a constant stream of resolutions that get proposed on the Mideast, um, expressing support for Israel uh, uh, about something it's done, or sympathy with victims of a suicide bombing, um, or condemning Iran or other people in the region who are being hostile to Israel. And these become tests of sort of loyalty of people in Congress on this issue. And those who vote in the way that AIPAC wants will ultimately, will in many ways be rewarded ultimately with, with campaign contributions from people sympathetic to AIPAC. AIPAC itself does not give money, but they sort of, this whole, um, um, series of votes and, and their very careful cataloging of how people vote very much affects where people make decisions about who to give the money to. Our experience with the United States is very unique, especially at this time, where the world needs to understand the thinking, the attitude, and the behavior pattern of uh, the Americans. And that's where those of us who were born and raised in America, we can play a significant part in helping the rest of the Muslim Ummah at this critical time understand how to deal with the monster called America. Of course, because now, look, if we took that question of England, what happened recently in England, in America, in Greece, it is the question of those oppressed ones. If they are not Muslims, they are not Muslims, we know, but they are fighting for their rights they see that those who are on power, they don't work for their interests. They work 
for the hidden interest for the Jewish lobby. In questa sfera. Dunque, diciamo, cos'è l'importante? Quindi ammettiamo anche che vi fosse innanzitutto un problema economico. Eh, anche se vi è solo un problema economico, riguarda sempre l'Islam, riguarda sempre il movimento islamico e si può parlare comunque di un risveglio islamico, perché comunque appunto eh, questo è l'Islam, cioè non è solo eh, pregare all'interno di una moschea, ma anche cosa? Far sviluppare le società, eh, farle progredire e migliorarle da un punto di vista economico e materiale. Quindi appunto eh, è un risveglio islamico a tutti gli effetti, anche se volessimo dire che queste, eh, queste rivoluzioni sono nate da un malcontento economico. The matter was only when it would happen, the awakening, because God Almighty is uh, asking uh, people, asking Muslims to get up, to uh, see what the real situation is and to know how to cope with it. And uh, the most important thing uh, of our life of our mission in this short life is to understand who we are, why we are here, and where we are heading to. So this is the most important question. If you understand these questions, in that case, we would have to wake up and to stick up to the message that we have been born for and that we are living for. So believe it or not, we have to try to rescue the people of America, not the government of America, because it's the government of America that uses the poor, the Latino, the blacks, right? Poor whites, they put a suit on them and they send them over here. That's who kills us over here. That's who kills everybody in, here. in, in, Af in Afghanistan. Those are poor, stupid white people, dumb blacks and Latinos, right? So we have to educate them too, so they don't, right? We don't want us to put on a suit and come kill us. We have to educate them. Susan Brothers, thanks everyone for being here. We're from the organization March Forward, and we are here to say to all those serving in the Army, in the Marines, in the Air Force, in the Navy, that you have the absolute right to refuse to take part in these criminal wars, and that's a right that all of you should exercise. You have no reason to go put your life on the line and kill and die for profit. We've been to Iraq, we've been to Afghanistan, and we know what these wars are really about. And we joined the military for many reasons, because we need a college education, because we need a job, because we need health care. And then we join the military, and they tell us that our enemies are poor people in caves in Afghanistan, or poor people in the deserts of Iraq. But we've been to those countries, and we know that our enemies are not other poor people abroad. Our enemies are the people that laid us off from our jobs, that denied us health care, that make it impossible to get an education. Our enemies are not in the poorest countries on the planet, but right here in the richest one. We all have one thing in common as humans. We want to live in peace, we want to live happily, we want to take care of our children, we want to have dignity, we want to survive, regardless where we live. And the people of the United States are tired of their government. All the dictators have nationalism. After colonialism, the powers to be use nationalism to divide us up into this country and that country, not a ummah. What's being born now, we believe, is an idea of ummah, like we was before. And those who are serving sincerely God, they in reality would serve people. Not only their people, but all people on the earth. Because as God Almighty said in the Quran that uh, uh, oh people, we have created you from a male and female and made of you peoples and nations and tribes to recognize each other, to live in peace, in understanding, in harmony, in good relationship treatment and so on. And the best one in, in the sight of God Almighty is the one who is most pious. And this most pious is the one who is uh, uh, most obedient to, to God Almighty and who is serving human beings, and not only human beings, but all creatures that God Almighty had created. We've called for this 
these things for decades. You know, Arab Spring, death to America. Everything that we call for is happening. We tell the brothers, don't say Mag Bag America anymore. Why? Because America is dead. America is finished as a global power. So we believe that this is a, a Ayom Allah, you know, Ayom, the days of Allah. This is Ayom Allah, the days of Allah. And this is one of those special periods in history when we all have to be our best. That's what we're saying to everybody. Not traditionalism, not regionalism, not nationalism, not Iranianism, Arabism, Americanism, Pakistan, no. Islam. Islam, because we believe this is a period where Islam should not only fix itself, but fix the rest of the world. Bidari avval qadam ast. Avval qadam yagza ast. Dar seyre erfaniyam yagza avval qadam ast. Dar in seyre, in ham seyre elahi u erfani ast. Bidari avval qadam ast. Va keshvar hai islami, millat hai muslim, ملت های مستضعف در سرتاسر سر جهان اینها بیدار شدند و سیاه های امریکایی کتک این بیداری را میخورند و انشاءالله پیروز خواهند شد